Hello, I am Michael Collins and this is Media Focus. In this video today, we are going to be doing something slightly different. I am going to be talking about a game which is not actually on the specification. I wanted to point out an example of a video game which is very, very different from Assassin's Creed. I wanted to point out an example of an independent video game which is completely out of the mainstream. Um, and I am also going to be playing this game. I've just re-downloaded it just now. Um, and I'm going to discuss as I play through it as well, uh, discuss the difference between independent games and mainstream games as well. So the game we're going to be talking about today is The Silver Case. And I've just got its Wikipedia page up because, as I love to say, Wikipedia is brilliant and it should be your first port of call if you need any information. Uh, just remember that it's not always correct, but it generally is a great place to start your research. Now, The Silver Case was first published on the Sony PlayStation in 1999. It was developed uh, and published by Grasshopper Manufacture, which is a company which is made up of several other different companies which disbanded in the late 90s. The Silver Case is an adventure game slash a point and click slash a visual novel. So this is a mishmash of different genres of video games. So an adventure game or a point and click is a generally a Western genre of video game where you use your computer's mouse in order to be able to click on stuff and you solve puzzles and things like that. Uh, notable games within this genre include games like Myst, uh, which was released for PCs and Macs in the early 1990s, um, and things like uh, Gabriel Knight 2, The Beast Within. Um, these games are often very, very difficult, although they generally don't require any fast reflexes or anything like that, which makes it perfect for people like myself who would much rather use my brain um, than uh, other things like my fast reflexes, although those kinds of games are cool as well. So this game was first released on the Sony PlayStation in Japanese in 1999, uh, but much, much later it was released on Windows uh, in English in 2016, um, and it was also released physically on the PlayStation 4 in 2017, and I played through both versions of this because uh, I absolutely love this game. Um, so the other genre which the silver case is is a visual novel. The game is extremely text heavy and although there's graphics and although there's music there is a big emphasis on text and there's a big emphasis on reading a story as opposed to things like re uh, reflexes and uh, building up a high score or something like that. Um, just to kind of give a little overview of the game um, you can, I'm not saying you should, but you can buy this game on Steam. It is retailing for $19.99, although I will point out that you can often get it for much, much, much cheaper. It's quite frequently in sales uh, on both the PlayStation 4 and on Steam as well. Um, and the game is critically, well, well... <laughs> Let's just take a look at this. On Steam, uh, the game's reviews average out a 9 out of 10. So these are user reviews. Uh, if we look here on Google reviews, 80% of people like this video game. That's pretty good. However, if we just have a quick look at Metacritic. Uh, so Metacritic is an aggregate of different reviews. We can see we've got this huge disparity between uh, things like magazines, so professional critics and reviewers and users. So the average score based on actual critical reviews and magazines and newspapers and websites is 64 out of 100, which is pretty average, mixed or average reviews. However, the user score on Metacritic is much, much more favorable, 8.1%. Now, this is completely to be expected for a game like The Silver Case. This is not a mainstream game at all. This is a game which has a very, very niche audience. And although most people who play this game will frankly absolutely hate it. Uh, certain people will play this and absolutely love it. And this is exactly who this game is aimed for. It's aimed for people exactly like me. Um, so this is why I just wanted to kind of go through a little run through of this. So what I'm going to do is let's just close all this. There we go. Brilliant. 
so I've just re-downloaded this game using the application Steam. Uh, I bought it a few years back. I've never actually run it on this computer before. Uh, I've got a slightly better computer now. Uh, so let's just see how this goes. So I'm going to open this up and I'm going to talk you through this and hopefully uh, the soundtrack won't completely deafen you. So. As we can see, the game is developed by Grasshopper Manufacture. That is their iDents. The game was ported by a company called Active Gaming Media. Uh, originally, it was on the Sony PlayStation, which was significantly earlier. The second we open up the game, we get the sequence here, which is sometimes known as an attract sequence or an attract mode. Um, and this is essentially a pre-game sequence which essentially informs you what kind of game that you're playing. Um, these graphics are obviously a little bit rough around the edges compared to stuff that we might see today and this is quite frankly because the game is 21 years old at this stage. One thing which is kind of interesting about the game The Silver Case is that it was very very cheap to make in terms of you know how it was made so the developers had to take loads and loads of shortcuts when it came to making it so they didn't have the capability and the capacity to make this full 3d game in real time like they would do later on so working with their limitations uh the developers uh suda 51 or goichi suda and his team at grasshopper manufacture uh used a combination of different elements including live action video uh, pre-drawn images and some 3D graphics as well. And all of these elements are completely mashed together and combined in this way, which is actually quite disorientating for the audience. So I'm just going to click beyond this now. Can I even do that? Are you going to let me do that? Hit space. Hit enter. Is it even letting me? Maybe I need to watch all of this the first time stream. So one thing that we'll see as we go through this game is this, what the developers call the film window system. So in order that this game could run on the Sony PlayStation, which is quite underpowered compared to modern consoles, they came up with this special system where essentially lots of different windows are on screen all at the same time. So what we have here is a title screen which demonstrates the name of the game and also asks me to press start. So I'm just going to try clicking there. Brilliant. Okay, so that's worked. There we go. So from this kind of straightforward screen here, I can choose whether to change my settings, which I might do. Uh, make sure the language is in English, full screen, good resolution, controls, WASD, wow. Cool. Excellent. Okay. Um, hmm. Right, let's go. Cool. Excellent. So uh, just before I do begin, uh, just a quick word of warning. I can't actually remember what happens at the very, very beginning of this game, but this game does contain very, very strong language throughout uh, and some quite graphic and adult scenes. Um, so even though we don't actually have realistic depictions of violence and things like that, and it's all mainly still images, uh, there's some quite disturbing aspects to this game. So we're going to click on new game there. I'm going to select English there. Uh, who am I? What's a really, really good question. I am Michael. Um, and then we are just going to hit OK. Brilliant. So already we start off the game at chapter X0. One thing you might notice about this game straight away is we do not start off with a flashy opening sequence, but instead we start off with um, a completely black screen. <sighs> Uh, just with text coming down. As we can see, the production values for this game are very low. Um, already the game is completely chucking us into the fray of the extremely complicated story. This is not a game that you can just play once. Um, and the stats and the ideas that this game kind of comes out with uh, is pretty full on. It is a psychological thriller. Uh, there are many, many characters, at least 30 named characters within this game. Um, so in terms of an introduction, this is very, so I'm clicking past this way, way too quickly. 
in terms of an introduction, well, we're kind of left thinking, well, who are we as a player? I got to put in my name at the beginning. These graphics here are obviously very, very straightforward. We see a map, we're kind of moving along. One of the cool things about this video game is its soundtrack, which is absolutely exceptional. It was, uh, the soundtrack was made by a composer called Masafumi Takada, who later went on to make many soundtracks for Grasshopper Manufacture. He's also made soundtracks for Nintendo games as well. Uh, and probably most um, uh, famously of all, he's done the soundtrack to the Danganronpa series as well. So already we can see this idea of the film window series. Rather than trying to show a number of different things at the same time, we have lots of different styles of graphics and they're really just hitting the audience all at the same time. It is extremely confusing. Who is this guy talking? We don't actually know. Why is he swearing at me? I don't actually know. Who am I? You don't actually know, and actually, I don't want to spoil anything, but who you are in this game is a really, really important point. So we can see these very kind of crude 1990s style CG graphics here going down the road. This is an example of what we call a cold opening. So apart from that intro sequence where we kind of get some general idea about what the game is about, this idea of his city, of his crimes, this crime department that you, the player, seem to be part of, the heinous crimes division. But there's two characters in this car. And you are neither of these two characters. But at this stage, the game is not actually telling you this, which positions the audience in an extremely uncomfortable and confusing mode of address. What's going on? Who are we? What are all these words which are on screen? Who is that guy and why is he clutching a human head? It's all very, very creepy. So... In terms of what this game offers audiences, well, let's just try and chuck in a couple of theoretical frameworks. So first of all, let's consider uh, Karen and Seaton. So Karen and Seaton argue that conglomeration and ownership of media products is going down a very, very bad path that in general, uh, media products are made by absolutely huge corporations and that essentially they make products where I'm just going to get out of this for just a sec. Can I, I hope I've actually set the volume levels right. Um, so essentially what Karen and Seaton argue is that video games and other forms of media are, um, yeah, going down this bad path. Essentially, there's only a few companies which own media products and this is a bad idea because this limits creativity. But essentially, video games need to make money and they're so ridiculously expensive um, that they have to beat every single last form of competition. And one of the antidotes to this, according to Karen and Seaton, is this idea of smaller companies and individual media producers and independent media producers coming up with some kind of alternative to this. So the Silver Case and the developers Grasshopper a manufacturer are an excellent example of this. So for players like myself who are perhaps bored or maybe never were particularly interested in other games anyway, um, this offers a completely different experience. So this for me is much much closer in terms of its style and in terms of what it offers the audience to something like an independent film or an art film. Obviously the gameplay, the act of actually playing the game is completely different. Um, one thing I'll definitely point out about this game is it's absolutely not fun to play at all. There's reams and reams of text to go through and when you actually do start to actually get into the game, start to move around and yeah, you know, there are game, there is gameplay, there are puzzles and things like that. Uh, it's a very, very different experience to potentially what a lot of gamers will be used to. But this doesn't matter. The game was very, very cheap to make. It was an experimental game. Uh, it was chucked out there to see who would be interested in it. Um, and instead of having an absolutely huge following, this game has what we call a cult or a niche audience. So as we see, saw from the review scores, yeah, reviewers hated this game. They considered it to be boring. They considered it to be confusing. They said the plot made absolutely no sense. Yeah, it doesn't. 
who cares? Um, and they also argued that the game was frustrating and clunky and boring and feels like a game which is even much older than a game from the 1990s. And that's absolutely true as well. So if we were to consider another theoretical perspective, a really good theory that we can apply to this is Henry Jenkins' fan theory. So Henry Jenkins argues that there are many, many different ways in which audiences can interact with media products. And I think the Silver Case is an absolutely perfect example of this. So this game is extremely mysterious. Its narrative is extremely complicated. And there's, frankly, unless I'm being extremely stupid, there's absolutely no way of understanding this narrative without doing a significant amount of research online and buying books and things like that. Um, so in order for me to actually pick apart this narrative, well, first of all, I've had to play this game. Uh, I played it through all the way through twice now um, and its sequel as well. Um, and another, uh, you know, um, thing that you would have to do in order to understand and to consider this game is that you'll have to talk to people online about it as well. So one of the most important things of playing this game for me is using the internet, using things like Twitter uh, and online forums and discussing the plot and discussing the intricacies of the plot with other people as well. Um, so yeah, absolutely. So if we're to consider the silver case, I kind of I forgot how long the introduction sequence is, but I think, you know, we've got a good sense of, you know, exactly what kind of game this is from just looking at this. This offers a niche experience to a niche audience. It's confusing, it's weird, and it's very, very different. This game is never, ever going to sell millions of copies, but quite frankly, the people who do like this game and the people who do get enthusiastic about this game are going to get very, very enthusiastic about this game. And if we think back to Curran and Seaton, they argued that it's really, really important for media products to offer a diversity of experiences to audiences and there's a number of different voices so what we have here is a game which quite frankly couldn't have been made using normal techniques and couldn't have been made using high budget there is absolutely no way that a corporation like ubisoft would make a game like the silver case and this is essentially because um the game would make nowhere near enough money for them now, they could obviously spend less on it, and actually that could be a really, really interesting, uh, you know, I'd really, really love it if Ubisoft did make a game like The Silver Case. And to be quite honest, it would be really, really cheap. You just need a few people to make something like this, a small team of people, an excellent composer, someone to write it, you know, someone to do the programming, someone to do 3D assets, someone to draw it. You know, we're talking about a fairly large team, maybe 10, 20 people to make something like this. Um, but obviously significantly less than the thousands of people that it takes to make a game like Assassin's Creed. So, yeah, absolutely. So this is just a little snapshot into what an independent video game will look like. Um, and this is also just to demonstrate that there are a whole range of different video game experiences out there. Um, and I strongly recommend you check out The Silver Case, especially if you can get it for cheap, because it's weird, it's strange, it's confusing, and the chances are you'll absolutely hate it. But if you do like it, this is the kind of thing that you will absolutely love. Um, and it's the kind of thing, you know, you're going to be thinking about for years. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you very much.